Isaiah chapter 12, verse number 1 begins, And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though thou wast angry with me. Thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord. Call upon His name. Declare His doings among the people. Make mention that His name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord. For He hath done excellent things that is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabit of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We sure do thank you, <coughs> Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for the good singing. Lord, we enjoyed the singing. Lord, thank you for the good testimonies. We enjoyed them. Thank you for the good fellowship for the service. We enjoyed that. Lord, we just enjoy being around the house of God, being around God's people. But we really rejoice and enjoy it, Lord, when songs are about you and folks are bragging on you and and folks are talking about you, Lord, it's just a blessing, Lord, that there are some that still want to worship our darling Savior. Now, Father, I pray you'd bless now, you'd help your people, you'd encourage them in the faith. God, we do pray if there's any amongst us unsaved, we'd see them saved tonight. Lord, we pray for the saints of God, you'd send revival to their, to their heart tonight. Lord, we know many has worked hard this week and labored in this wicked old world. And God, I pray that even they, though they're here tonight might be worn out, you'd refresh them and strengthen them and God do something special for them. I pray that every need of every heart would be met in our darling Savior. And I pray that Jesus would be high and lifted up and highly exalted amongst us. Uh, Father, now bless, speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus. We ask it all. Amen. Amen. We're interested in this chapter. And to be honest with you, I want to preach sweet tonight. Uh, I'm going on vacation. I don't want you to vote me out while I'm gone. So I'm going to try and preach sweet. So you hang in here with me for a minute. But I'm interested in this chapter, uh, 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 in particular a certain verse. But let's look at what the Word of God says. I want you to notice, first of all, the day mentioned in verse number 1. If you miss this, you miss the significance of the whole chapter. It says, and in that day. Now this is very important to understand. Isaiah is prophesying not of his day, not even of our day, but a day yet to come. Uh, the day he is speaking of uh, is the day that when the kingdom will come into play, uh, when the Lord Jesus uh, will have his millennial reign. Uh, this is a prophecy concerning Israel. Uh, it's concerning a time uh, uh, when they'll be gathered back into Jerusalem uh, and the Lord himself will reign from the throne of David. Uh, in the last verse it says, uh, uh, For great is the Holy One of Israel, that's Jesus, uh, in the midst of thee. Uh, uh, he'll literally be reigning from Jerusalem Jerusalem, uh, he'll rule and reign over this uh, earth for a thousand years. Uh, and what a blessing, uh, you and I, uh, uh, the bride of Christ, will rule and reign with him. We'll come back with him in Revelation 19, uh, riding those white horses. Uh, 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 he'll land on the Mount of Olives. He'll split that mountain in two, uh, a sharp two-edged sword to go out of his mouth. Uh, and he'll slay the armies uh, that have aligned themselves against Israel uh, at the battle that's going to happen in the valley of Megiddo, uh, the battle of Armageddon, uh, when Jesus himself uh, uh, will destroy all those that have fought against Israel. Uh, now listen, uh, 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 we find in this chapter, he said, uh, 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 that though thou wast angry with me. Now it's very important to understand that. Look again at verse number 1. And in that day... Thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though thou wast angry with me. Thine anger is turned away, 
and thou comfortest me. Uh, uh, my dear friends, the great tribulation period, uh, and I know you know eschatology, we've preached on it, taught on it. Uh, uh, the next great event uh, in prophecy is the translation of the saints, uh, 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 the catching away of the church, uh, what is commonly called the rapture of the church. Uh, and my dear friends, uh, uh, that can happen at any moment, in any time. Everything's been fulfilled. Uh, 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 there will be the shout of the archangel uh, uh, the trump of God shall sound the dead in Christ shall rise uh, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them uh, and so shall we ever be with the Lord what a blessing uh, 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 the Lord does not come back to the earth then we rise to meet him and during to what happens then, uh, 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 there'll be what is called the times of Jacob's trouble, uh, or the uh, uh, what we know is the great tribulation period. Uh, and while we uh, are in heaven, uh, uh, while we are being judged at the uh, uh, judgment seat of Christ, uh, while we are being uh, uh, given our, our wedding garments, and while we are uh, uh, enjoying the marriage supper of the Lamb uh, here on this earth, uh, 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 things will line up where they'll uh, end up with a one world government, uh, a one world uh, religion uh, where the Antichrist will show up uh, there's going to be anarchy in this world there's going to be terror in this world uh, and the Antichrist is going to have all the answers uh, and everybody's going to fall in love with him uh, and do what he says uh, they'll take the mark of the beast uh, and those that take the mark of the beast, uh, uh, friend they'll be damned and can never ever have any hope of heaven uh now listen uh, uh this is nowhere in my notes but i'm here all right uh, uh listen uh uh, uh, the first three and a half years of this seven year tribulation all that's going to be set up and things are going to go pretty well but then the second three and a half years uh, uh, the Antichrist is going to turn against Israel he's going to hunt Israel down uh, Israel's going to be the lady that runs to the wilderness uh, she's going to be hunted uh, and those who had rejected the mark of the beast they'll be hunted as well uh, 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 but a hey, uh, 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 then the Bible says all nations shall turn against Israel uh, and while Israel is being hunted uh, Israel is being purged because of John 1 14 he came unto his own and his own received him not but as many as received him hallelujah here we are uh, uh, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name uh, uh, you see Israel still the true vine of God uh, uh, the church is a branch that was grafted into the vine uh, and we've been recipients of the promises of Abraham uh, uh, because of what Jesus Christ did uh, when he reconciled us old Gentile dogs back to God uh, through the blood of Calvary uh, uh, but can I say that uh, uh, Israel will be hated uh, and Israel will be punished uh, because Israel rejected him when he came the first time and the Bible lets us know uh, uh, in Revelation chapter 7 that there's going to be 144,000 Jews that come out of the Great Tribulation period. Now, I don't know how many Jews there are on the face of the earth right now, but it's going to be purged down to 12,000 of each of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And then the Bible says that there's going to be a great number that no man can number uh, from every tongue, kindred, and people. Now, let me just, right here, Parker for a second. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 tells us that anybody that has heard the gospel and rejected the Lord Jesus Christ, when the rapture takes place, strong delusion will be brought on them to where they'll believe a lie, they'll take the mark of the beast, and they'll be damned. If they won't accept it by grace through faith freely now, they certainly won't be willing to die for it in the next dispensation. And my dear friends, that's what is exactly going to take place. I don't know all the particulars, and no one really knows all the particulars, but I know in every dispensation of time, God's always had a way for man to come to Him. 
after Adam and Eve sinned, God killed some goats uh, and clothed them of their nakedness. Uh, and can I say, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Moses was given the law. Abraham trusted by faith. Uh, it's always been by the grace of God and by faith in believing what God said uh, that righteousness has been imputed. When you and I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ by faith, we are then washed in His blood and robed in His righteousness, uh, and it's always been a faith way. <laughs> now, I don't know how God's going to put it all together. I know there'll be some form of Old Testament worship, but there's going to be a way in the tribulation period where people can come to God, but they're going to have to be willing to die for it. Now, can I say this? I've heard it all my life. Well, what about all these Chinese people? What about all those Indian people and all those uh, countries where they don't have the gospel? And, and, and God, if he was just, uh, why would he let them people die and go to hell? Who said he's not just? Now, first of all, let me say, the gospel's been presented to every nation in the last 2,000 years. But there's been tyrants and dictators that would not allow it to be preached in their countries. Those men will have the blood on their hands from everybody that grew up in their nations. But God, being a just God and a holy God, uh, realizes a lot of folks in those nations uh, uh, haven't heard the gospel now, but he'll make a way where, hey, they too can get to go to heaven one day. What a blessing. Huh? But can I say, Israel's going to be punished because she rejected God. And when he says, thou wast angry with us, his anger's been turned away because now we're in the millennium. Now, they not only know the Lord, they get to see Him as He is. Now, let me just throw a ring here right now. You and I, that'll be raptured out. We'll be given a glorified body just like Him. We come back to earth. That crowd that come out of the tribulation, they don't have a glorified body yet. They're still flesh and blood. Hmm? That's why for a thousand years they'll still have children. That's why we have to rule and reign with Him. That's why we have to constantly point to the Lamb and talk about the significance of the Lamb. And that's why after the millennium, uh, Satan will be loose from the bottomless pit uh, and he will uh, 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 cause uh, an insurrection and cause some uh, uh, to challenge Christ again. Uh, and my dear friends, those will be destroyed with Satan and thrown into the lake of fire forever and ever. Because, you know, people say, well, here's the crowd that God's going to destroy. How can they be destroyed if they've seen him? Well, how many saw him when he walked on earth the first time and rejected him? Huh? All right, now I'm getting on that to my notes. Just notice the day. We're talking about the kingdom, the millennial reign of Christ. You've got to understand there's a lot of folks that don't study the Bible. The book of Matthew's not written to the church. It's written to the Jews. The book of Matthew is to signify Jesus as the king. And can I say there's a lot of folks who want to take a, a church doctrine out of Matthew. Now we can uh, uh, look at what he says and we can glean from it, uh, but you get in real big trouble when you want to uh, take Matthew 24 uh, and quote that as your doctrine for the end times. Matthew 24 is written to the Jews. Uh, they that endure to the end shall be saved. What it's talking about? Those that endure the tribulation period uh, shall be saved. They get to go to the kingdom, huh? I'm not enduring. I'm enjoying my trip. Uh, so you've got to be very careful because in, in the book of Matthew, it talks a lot about the kingdom, and Jesus talked about a lot about the kingdom. He's talking to the Jews, and he's talking about the millennial reign. Uh, my dear friends, we're not in the kingdom, but we're going. Uh, well, that didn't cost any extra. Now you see why I couldn't let you sing that song. I had to get all that out. We see the day. I want you to notice the deliverer in verse number 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He's also become my salvation. We see the deliverers, Jesus himself. Notice the drawing in verse 3. Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. 
You and I call uh, uh, what they're referring to in the kingdom water out of the wells of salvation. We call that fruit of the Spirit. Uh, we draw on our salvation every day by walking in the Spirit. Uh, we've got joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, meekness, uh, temperance, all those things, love. Uh, all those things are fruit that we enjoy because we're saved. Uh, and there is going to be a well salvation. They're going to experience things uh, they've never known uh, uh, because of what Jesus will do for them. Uh, uh, notice, if you will, the declaring in verse number 4. And in that day shall you say, praise the Lord. Now I want to tell you something. The Jews don't say praise the Lord right now. Can I help you something? This was odd. Brother Aaron, you know he does all of our media work and, and does all of our phone app and does all of our uh, a live stream and you know all that getting it up to our YouTube channel and all that stuff don't ask me I don't understand any of it he does all that okay uh, somebody asked me well I'm out preaching to me how do you do this how do you do that don't know I just get up and preach and it ends up on the internet I don't know he does it all right but we we're in the process of doing something a little bit different uh, uh, Apple's changing things and uh, in order to to, to broadcast on the internet in, in one of the areas we do, we have to own our app. We have actually don't own it. We actually have paid other people to do our app for us. And all. So we have to own that in order for it to be on the Apple Store and all kinds of stuff. So we bought it. It was 100 bucks. I'm thinking, why haven't we owned it till now? Huh? 100 bucks? Marcy finally played her back ties and we bought it, you know? <laughs> but, but we own the app. But now Apple's got all these rules. And so he said, Preacher, you're the one that's got to talk to them. Well, I don't know anything. Why do I got to talk to them? So I'm on a hold yesterday with Apple. I spent half my life on hold because nobody has any customer service anymore. English, press one. Press one for this, two for this, six for this. How come there's not a button you press to get a human? That's what I want, human. Well, finally, I'm on a hold. I'm on Apple. And I will say this about Apple customer service. That is the best customer service I've dealt with in a long time. Uh, first, they sent me an email. said, click on this. Somebody will call you. I clicked on that. My finger didn't get off the button, and the phone's ringing. I mean, it was Johnny on the spot. And then they had to put me on hold and put me in the right person. Blah, 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 blah. While I'm on hold, there's some opera music cranking up. I'm not an opera kind of guy. Hmm. I can't wait for the fat lady to sing. You know what I'm saying? I hear, ah, click, I'm done. You know? I'm not an opera kind of guy. Hmm. Unless it's Phantom of the Opera, I kind of like that one. But all the rest of it, I'm done. I ain't, yeah. Well, I'm listening to opera. I got to listen to I don't understand all that that guy is singing because he's got a terrible, loud, obnoxious voice. But it sounded like he said, praise the Lord. I got to listen again. It's opera singing the 140th Psalm. And I thought, blessed be the Lord. I'm glad Apple's getting our money. I wonder if Apple knows they got the 140th song being played because they've got some elevator music service that says uh, when you put people on hold, we'll have a song. They said, do it. They didn't know, uh, but Apple was praising the Lord. I'm thinking there ain't nobody. Apple knows the Lord, but their music does. But anyway, and I mean, it was right. It wasn't an NIV a v version either. I mean, it was the right one. I'm like, hell, and she got it on the phone. I said, can you put me back on hold? <laughs> But look, there's some declaring to be done. Israel don't praise the Lord now. Israel praises Israel. Now they'll make mention of the Lord, but not the Lord Jesus. Mm. But again it says, And in that day shall you say, Praise the Lord. Call upon His name. Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. 
Kind of like we gave you opportunity to brag on the Lord. That day, Israel will be bragging on the Lord. Notice the delighting in verse 5. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Why? Because all the earth just got delivered. The ones that are left have been delivered. Hmm. Verse 6, cry aloud and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion. Zion, of course, is Jerusalem. And so we find that there's delighting. And then there's dazzlement or amazement. For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. How amazing that we'll dwell with Him and He'll dwell with us. Amen. How amazing that the very nation that He uh, uh, hewed out as his own and did so many wonderful things that rejected him he still is long suffering and gives them another opportunity for him to dwell with them hmm? I'm interested in verse 2 I've done preaching a whole lot more than I thought I'd preach but verse number 2 says behold God is my salvation I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song he also has become my salvation. Uh, Isaiah pins it down. God is my salvation. And you and I, apart from God, are lost. Amen. I chuckle when people say, I got saved. No, you didn't get anything. You were allowed to receive salvation in the Lord. Mm -mm. It's not your salvation. It's His salvation. God is my salvation. Me and myself, all my righteousness is as filthy rags. But hey, me and Christ, I'm saved forevermore. He is my salvation. It goes on to say that God is my strength. Mm -mm. What a blessing. The Lord Jehovah is my strength. Mm, you and I, outside of Him and His grace, we wouldn't have the strength to get through anything. But through Him, there's nothing we can't get through. He is my song. What a blessing. And children of God have a song, not a song that the world knows. Our song is a song of praise unto our God that He put in us when we got born again. But notice it says the last clause of that verse, He also has become my salvation. Wait a second. Verse 2 says, Behold, God is my salvation. And it closes, He also has become my salvation. Well, if He is my salvation, how come He has to become my salvation? Well, what he is really saying when he closes this, yeah, my salvation is in God. God is my salvation. But he has become my salvation. In other words, he has become my personal Savior. Hmm? Uh, my salvation is of God, but my salvation is in Jesus. He has become my salvation. And can I say... The Lord's always been salvation. But until you got saved, He hadn't become your salvation. Hmm? And so we see this. But I, I'm interested in the middle narrative of this verse. Notice it starts off, Behold, God is my salvation. But look at the middle verse. The narrative changes from God to I. Look what it says. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. There's a difference here. Can I say that he moves from God to I. He is, announces that he will now trust and not be afraid because of the Lord Jehovah. Now he starts off with God is my salvation. God, the term God means almighty. He says, All, the Almighty is my salvation. But then he says, I'm going to trust and not be afraid because of the Lord Jehovah. Now, what does Jehovah mean? Jehovah means the self-existing one. See, God doesn't need anybody or anything. The reason that scientists and a lot of people have a problem with the Bible is, God said, let there be light, and there was light. God said, and then it happened. God said, see, God's the self-existing one. God didn't need anything. God took nothing and made everything because He is God. Uh, 
He's almighty, but he's the self-existing one. He doesn't need anybody or anything for him to exist. And then we find that he calls him the Lord Jehovah. That's the almighty self-existing one. He said, I will trust and not be afraid because he's more than just almighty. He's the almighty self-existing one. He is truly God. And he needs nobody else. Isaiah goes on to say, I am the Lord, and beside me there is none else. And so we find that explanation. The Lord Jehovah has become his strength and song and has become his salvation. And so all that in mind, I just want to throw this out for a minute. I want to give you this little thought. I want to preach on the impact of Jehovah, the self-existing one. The impact, how he impacts. What is so significant about the Lord Jehovah? What can I say? He impacts like no one else can because of, uh, first of all, what the name Jehovah itself is saying. If you break down Jehovah in the Hebrew language, it is actually three words making one. J or J-E, and the actual Hebrew word would be J-A-H, but J-E means him to come. Ho, the H-O, means him who is. Va means him who was. It's him to come, him who is, and him who was. He is the eternal God. He's Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end. He's uh, from everlasting to everlasting. He's the one who always has been. He's the one who is, uh, and he's the one to come. Uh, 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 It could be summed up when Moses asked him, uh, what is your name that I may tell him? He said, I am that I am. Uh, That's my name. Uh, God is always in the present tense. Uh, He's I am. Uh, I see time is of the essence with us, uh, but not God. God's always in the present. He's Alpha and Omega. He always is uh, because he's God. Hallelujah, the self-existing one. Uh, He he impacts like no one else can because of what his name is actually saying. But not only that, but because uh, 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 he's Jehovah Jireh. What does that mean? He's, then it means the Lord will provide. Uh, you and I can take refuge and we can be impacted. He has become our salvation uh, and we can know that the Lord will provide. I don't have to get up every morning worried if God's big enough to take care of me. Uh, Friend, if He uh, uh, can take care uh, of the smallest of insects, if He can take care of the whole animal kingdom, uh, if He can take care of the vegetation kingdom, uh, if He can tell birds to fly, uh, and when one falls to the ground, He doesn't miss its funeral. uh, Hey, if He can provide for the fish in the sea, uh, uh, we're worth more than many sparrows to Him, friends. Uh, Hey, He can take care you and I uh, I've known him for 48 years uh, and he just constantly is provided uh, every need supply uh, I've never been without uh, hey there's been times it's got lean uh, but it's never got empty uh, uh, but most of the time uh, it's been pressed down shaken over bubbling over uh, cause the Lord will provide hallelujah huh? he's Jehovah Jireh He impacts like no one else can because he's Jehovah Jehovah Rapha. That's the Lord that healeth. What a blessing. He's the great physician. Matter of fact, I know uh, uh, many of us will have to go see a doctor and a doctor's limited. He can only rely on what he's been taught. But Jehovah, he is the great physician. He's the one that invented us. He formed us from the dust of the ground. Uh, He knows every cell of your body. Uh, Hey, he's the one that invented medicine. Uh, He's the one that can take care of you and I. Uh, And if any healing comes, it comes from the hand of him. Uh, Oh, we, we don't have time. Start going around the room of those. When he got out of the doctor's hand, the great physician stepped in. Uh, I think we got about five here tonight that uh, 
Uh, uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we got five here tonight. Had a cancer sentence. Um, but more importantly, they had a salvation sentence. They knew the great physician. Hmm? All of us here tonight, huh? Serving God, worshiping. By the way, cancer free. Hmm? Uh, uh, I tell you all, I get stuff all the time from UC, the Cancer Institute, you know, talking about do I need a, to get involved in one of these self help groups to deal with being, you know, having cancer and all that. You know, I feel guilty. I didn't have it long enough to be fretting over it. Are you listening? Because mm, I had the master. Hmm? Uh, I'm just talking about he's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth. He's Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. There's been several songs sang tonight about him being our victor. We have victory in Christ. He is our banner. Huh? In ourselves we're defeated. In ourselves we're losers. Huh? In ourselves uh, we're no match for the devil. Huh? But I've got good news. The devil's no match for our victor. Huh? Hey, uh, that's why we can run to the battle. Because huh? we're in Christ tonight. Huh? And the Lord's already won the battle. Huh? Hey, we have the victory. Huh? Hey, he has the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Huh? He's the one that was dead and is risen. And he's alive forevermore. Uh, what a blessing to know. Uh, the devil don't even have the keys to his own house. Hallelujah. Because huh? we have the victory. It do us some good every now and then to realize how victorious we are in Christ. A lot of times I see folks walk in on their lower lip and I can understand having a bad day. But if you get a hold of the Lord Jehovah and realize he's already got a hold of you, he is our banner. Uh, that lower lip might just perk up. Hmm? Uh, the Lord, Jehovah Nisi, he's our banner. And by the way, the Song of Solomon says his banner over me is love. Hmm? Uh, can I help you something? The Lord didn't have to beat me to get me saved. He loved me to salvation. The goodness of God leaving it to repentance, huh? Can I say, uh, for God so loved the world, huh? That means he did it on purpose, huh? He said, I've loved thee with an everlasting love, huh? The Bible says we love him because he first loved us. Uh, 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 when you realize how uh, uh, great God is and how merciful he is, how gracious he is, uh, how lost you are without him, uh, and the fact that he loves you no matter uh, how far off in sin you've been, uh, hey, that banner of love will draw you to salvation. Salvation. Uh, I bless his name. I'm talking about how he impacts us. Jehovah impacts our lives. He's Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. Hmm. Jesus said, My peace I leave with thee. Not peace as the world know. My peace. And can I say his peace is out of this world? Matter of fact, this world won't have peace till he's reigning on the throne in the kingdom. Because uh, he is peace. Hmm? What a blessing to have his peace. Uh, I've told you all this. I never really thought about it much. I heard Sydney not long ago start talking about all the operations I've had. I'm thinking, Lord, have mercy. That's bad. I got a bunch of zippers on me. But she's talking about all that. But it's amazing. Every time I've had to go in and have surgery, and I understand people are made different. I understand that. You got high strung people, you got low strung people. You got, you know, people that by nature just kind of fret a little bit, and then you got people by nature who don't really care. Uh, but every time I go in to have surgery, I guess they're prepared for the worst. And they put that blood pressure cup on me, and they take my heart rate. My blood pressure is always normal. And they look at me a little funny. And then my heart rate's always about 52. And I guess they're used to people's hearts beating out of their chest because they're anxious because they're about ready to get cut on. But you see, before I go into that operating room, I already know who has me. And can I say, I don't ever go and let anybody cut on me unless I got the peace of God on the whole thing. I love you, Brother Brian, but if you come in with a scalpel, you're not cutting on me. 
I don't even have to pray about that, bro. Huh? Uh, I've seen you cut your beard sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Huh? But listen, why is that? Because I got the peace of God. Right. Amen. Huh? Say, preacher, you might die. Don't threaten me with heaven. Uh, uh, I got news for you. We're all going to die unless Jesus comes. Uh, but listen, I've got, I, I've got this assurance. I'm in his hand, and his hand's in the Father's hand. And nothing can come to me unless it comes through his hand. So he's in control. Huh? Well, he's our peace. Huh? Got to move on. Got to move on. Huh? He's Jehovah Ra. The Lord is my shepherd. That's what David was saying in the 23rd Psalm. What a blessing to have a shepherd who cares for the sheep, uh, who knows the sheep, who knows where to lead the sheep. Where does he lead us? Green pastures. Uh, I watched just some of you right there. You heard a little thunder. Some of you got a little nervous right there. Huh? Now, I'm sure it happens somewhere along the line, but I guarantee you one place there's not going to be a lightning strike to destroy a building is at the church when people are in there worshiping God. So what are you fretting over? Huh? Huh? Was that you that did that? Oh, I thought you did you pointed to yourself. Oh. I thought, huh. You know, that might that might be God just amen and what's going on around here is what that might be, you know. Huh? He's my shepherd. And he leads us beside the still waters. Because sheep don't drink from troubled waters. And he leads us to green pastures doesn't say dried up nasty pastures doesn't say Georgia orange clay pastures uh, no green pastures uh, where we can feed uh, and feed among the lilies uh, what a blessing uh, I didn't know our shepherd knows where to lead us uh, it'd be a good day in our lives when we just let him lead uh, just follow him uh, and let him be Jehovah in our lives uh, then he's Jehovah Tizdenu I said, so what does that mean? The Lord our righteousness. We can have confidence tonight because we don't stand in our own righteousness. We stand in His righteousness. He impacts us because He's Jehovah Shema. The Lord is present. And when He's present, does really anything else matter? Hmm? Uh, nothing else matters. When the presence of God is manifested. Huh? Matter of fact, when His presence is manifested, you lose all track of time. You lose all track of yourself. You lose all track of anything outside because you're enamored with Him. That's the Jehovah we pray for when we ask Him to show up and meet with us. Jehovah Shema. Let me say this. I'll be done. If somebody's getting a call and it's not from God. Far too many have become satisfied with, Behold, God is my salvation, God Almighty. And trust me, I want God Almighty on the scene. Amen. Far too many satisfied living right there. But can I say this? We ought to strive for the Lord Jehovah. You say, what does that mean? That's personal. That is, the Lord has become my salvation. When you seek and, and are satisfied with that, you're satisfied with Him. Amen. Not the fact that He's almighty, that He has all power. You're satisfied with that intimacy of Him. Now, here's, 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 here's why they're satisfied with almighty. Regardless, Brother Aaron, if you live right, don't live right, you pray to him, you don't pray to him, you read, you don't read, he's almighty. And people are satisfied knowing that the almighty can change my circumstances. But to have the Lord Jehovah, that personal intimacy, see, that takes some work. He is Jehovah, but he's only Lord Jehovah for you. When you seek him, when you hunger after him, when you talk with Him, when you walk with Him, when you long for His presence, that costs you. See, you have to deny self to have that. You have to take time.
to spend with him to have that. Miss Annette and I have been married 33 years. I know her a whole lot better now than I did 33 years ago when we first got married. We spent a lot of time together. We've walked hand in hand for 33 years. We've had children. Our home's been impacted. And all kinds of things have happened because of the relationship we have. Can I say? You don't accept anything less than the Lord Jehovah in your life. Don't accept anything less than that personal, intimate. He already knows everything about you. Why don't you get to where you know everything about Him? Why don't you get to where you can hear His voice? Why don't you get to where you can know His walk? You know, we can be at the grocery store and she can be in a different aisle and I, and I know what aisle she's in because I know her steps. I know the sound of her feet. She's got short legs. I've got it down. Uh... Do you know the steps of the Savior when He's walking up beside you? Huh? Huh? In the midst of thunder, can you still hear His voice? In the, vit- in the midst of the noise of this world, can you still discern God's voice? How about this? Do you know His touch? Hmm? Do you know when He's speaking to your heart? Do you know when He's telling you to move up? Hmm? See, that's when he becomes Lord Jehovah, when you know him. And can I say, you just don't roll out of the bed and know him. That takes a concentrated effort. And he does say, seek and you shall find. He does say, knock and it shall be opened. He does say, ask and you shall receive. But it's got to be a conscientious daily discipline that I may know him and the power of His resurrection. My dear friends, that's when He becomes Lord Jehovah. See, Israel's always claimed they're God's chosen people. But in Isaiah chapter 12, He's not only redeemed them from the Antichrist, they say, the Lord Jehovah has become myself. Now they know Him because He's in the midst of them. And they know Him. When He was in the midst of them before, they didn't know Him. Now they know Him. I wonder tonight, how much do you know him? Hmm. Is he really the Lord Jehovah in your life? Say, preacher, I'm saved. Wonderful. But is he Lord Jehovah? Do you have that intimate, tender, sweet, wonderful relationship with him? Because that's what he really desires from all of us. He wants to walk with us in the cool of the day. And you can have that by getting rid of you and longing for him. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. As they're getting a song ready, maybe God spoke to your heart. Maybe here tonight, you're not saved. We'd love to introduce you to him. So you too can say, he's my salvation. Maybe tonight you're saved, but you're just not as close as you once were. Well, you can get there again. Maybe tonight you've never been as close as what you heard. Well, you can get there. It's all about the desire of your heart. And it's Jesus reigning on your heart. Folks are coming. God spoke to your heart. Why you come? And they're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the scriptures. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, why you ever desire to have a relationship with us, we do not know. But we are thankful we can walk with the Savior. Now, Father, bless in this invitation. These are already in the altar. Bless. Lord, I do pray if anybody's here tonight not saved, I pray they'd come give their heart to Jesus. Lord, I pray saved folks would desire even a closer walk with you than they've ever had before. You said in the book of James, draw nigh to God, He'll draw nigh to you. God helps folks to come. And God will thank you for what you do. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.